All right, this next lesson is in value, and this is something that seems simple, but it does take some time to get um, in class, and, and uh, I'd like to spend some time going over uh, what value is and what it means. So let's look at value. Um, why do we use value in art? Um, to create 3D effect, emphasis, a sense, sense of space, and mood. So there's all these reasons why we would use value, um, and what it is is basically the lightness and the darkness of, of a color or, a, you know, whatever the, the black and white is. So it's, it's, it's everywhere in between, right? It's all the grays, all the different shades. So that's what we're going to look at in this. Um, so here's some examples of those four that I just mentioned to you of different artworks. And you can take a look at these more in the uh, process journal presentation too, if you wanna really zoom in on them and take a better look at them. Um, but if we didn't have those really darks and really lights in all of these, then none of it could exist. I love this sidewalk uh, painting, drawing, not quite sure how the artist did it, if it was with chalk paint or with actual paint, but they make the illusion that Batman and Robin are coming up to save you because they're using value, they're using all these darks and lights to make it look realistic. So that's why um, we use value in art. That's how you make something look 3D and make it the way you want it to look. So shading. Shading, how does light affect value? Think about that for a second. How does light affect value? Light affects value because it literally changes the shade here. So we start, if you get a light on something, it's gonna make it lighter on this right side here. Whereas on the end of it, you've got your darker gradient, uh, your darker, and then you've got all these gradients in between. So all of these different values are what give these spheres, cubes, and cones all shapes. So this is an old practice sheet that I don't um, use anymore. That's why it's got the, the grading here. But I love this to show you how we shade an object. So we, we see value in all kinds of artwork. This is actually photography, but because Ansel Adams only had black and white photog photography to work with, he was um, very skilled at making things pop and look three, really 3D and beautiful in his images, very dramatic. Look at some of the clouds in those. Um, this is a painter called Carvaggio, and this, these paintings are old, and they're quite gruesome. Um, you know, they, they were actually Bible stories that were taken out of the Bible. Um, and the way even that they painted this blood here, it's sort of, it's not real blood, but it's, it's painted like a string, you know, like a ribbon. Um, but this is a, 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 this Carvaggio really wanted drama and, and he was all about these, these uh, fantastical Bible stories. This one in particular is, uh, the woman is Judith and she's slaying this, this horrible old dude named Holofarnes. And this is a book that was taken out of the Bible, but, um, creepy, great story nonetheless. And that's what he painted here. M.C. Escher. So this MC Escher is just amazing at details. Look at these. You could spend hours looking in them um, and zooming up on them. So if one of them interests you, um, you know, remember you could do something like this for your, your last uh, process journal for your artist research. But MC Escher uses so many different values. He manages to get so many lights, darks, and gray tones, mid-tones in there. Uh, and it just, it's so reflective and there's a skull in the middle of this eye. Oh, um, so let's talk about value. We start with mark, mark making. There's four different ways, I'm sorry, five different ways to make marks that you can practice in this class. The most common is blending. Um, of course, um, we do see a lot of cross hatching in uh, pen drawings and illustrations. Stippling and scribbling, people don't do as much anymore. And hatching's just like a basic way of mark making. They're all fun, they're all good. There's no one that's right or wrong. Um, the most common is blending. So that means that the most people use that because most people like it. It's, it makes a cool effect, it makes things look most 3D. But I'll show you lots of examples here in a second. Um, so hatching is a series of curved or straight lines. Whereas cross hatching is a series of lines that cross over each other. So cross. 
Um, the stippling is just dot, 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 dot. Okay, it's, it's a lot, a lot of dots. Uh, scribbling can be anything. Those are the letter E there. Um, on my example, I give you, um, it's even more detailed in the, in the, um, the video. So, um, and then blending is known as smooth shading, and that's what most people use. All right, here's, a, here's that all blown up for you so you can kind of see it there too. And then here's the different types in action. So you've got this John Lennon and the stippling, the dots. Gosh, that must have taken forever. Uh, Bruce Willis is cross-hatched here, and while Cameron Diaz is, Diaz is hatching and a little bit of cross-hatching in the background. Uh, Jack Nicholson is in scribbles, which is quite appropriate. And Anne Hathaway is using the traditional blending technique to get that beautiful 3D look, in, especially in her hair. All right, so uh, we're after what we get. So what you'll do first here, so I'm just kind of walking you through everything, and then at the end I'll go through with you what you should be doing for this lesson. Um, I'm walking you through value, this part here. So we've got to understand where all the lights and darks are in order to build this. So this is what we're moving toward. Um, shape is a closed area. Um, a form is a 3D. So shape is 2D and then form is 3D. Um, shapes can be flat, um, dull. There's lots of different ways that a shape can look. Just on this screen alone, you can see uh, what shape is doing. So you're going to practice first with a sphere. Uh, you're going to draw a sphere just like this into your process journal. Um, so in the sphere, I want you to have the highlight, which is the lightest color on that value scale that I, I showed you. I want you to have the transitional and mid-tones here, which are these like mid, not too dark grays, but not too light grays. And then we have the core of the shadow, which is super dark. It's the darkest part. And then we have this bottom reflected light, which you cannot forget about. You see it in all these. Reflected light there, reflected light here. Everything's got a little bit of reflected light, because otherwise, if you couldn't tell the difference between a shadow um, and the bottom of the item, the object, it wouldn't look 3D. And then your cast shadow is going to be quite dark, too. So here is where I show you an example of how the, where the light hits would change depending on where um, you put your highlight. So the highlight is this high part right here. You see that? The highlight is where the light hits. So this is a really good reference for when you're setting up and you can't figure out like where things are. Find the actual light in your room. Um, if you wanted to get into like a dark room and then just use like a little one little lamp so that you can control the lighting, that's actually a great idea. I mean, that's how, what I do in my office. I control my lighting. Um, here's an example of uh, a, a scribbled um, using, using like kind of scribbling and hatching together to create a finished product. Um, here's an example of uh, somebody who's not using super dark dramatic uh here, they're just going like washed out a little bit. Their mid-tone is here. Their shadow is here. And then here's some great examples of light to dark. These are all just wonderful examples. And I want you to have them so that you can have reference of what yours sh should look like when you're done. Um, and then this is my, uh, my favorite reference here because you can really see all the lights and the darks in them. And then after you do a sphere, you're also going to pick another shape. You can pick one of those shapes. You can pick one of these shapes to copy here. Uh, I think there's shapes. Nope. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm flipping through fast on you. Um, uh, so you'll pick one of these shapes. All right. So I'm going to show you some student examples of work here for this process journal. These are former students. They had to do five. You only have to pick three that you want to do. So uh, you're going to at least do blending. Everyone has to do blending, but then you, there's two that you can play with and I don't care which ones you do. Because a lot of people struggle with the stippling and I don't like the stippling to become something that people get hung up on. 
So really just focus on uh, picking things that you can actually practice with. So these are like, this is like a student example who they're learning, they're getting better, they're not quite there yet. Again, these are student examples where they're learning, they're getting better, so these aren't perfect. I want you to see that it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just practice. Um, that's all. Uh, and the next one here, some examples of what I want you to do for uh, the, the next part of it, which is doing the sphere and then picking one other uh, shape to do. Uh, so that you could do that. So here we go. Here's the breakdown. Now that we're, um, we've, you've seen the presentation. Um, once we break from here, you can grab your sketchbook and your drawing pencil, and you're definitely going to want a tortillion. Um, that is the white stick with the pointy ends, and uh, you will see me using it in the video. Okay, that's what that's for. Um, if you don't have one for some reason in your, your bag, you can also use a, a tissue and just put it on your finger and blend with that. Try not to blend with your finger. It's not good to get any pencil in your bloodstream. Okay, I mean, if it gets, you know, if it gets on your hand a little bit when you're drawing, it's fine. But when you're excessively blending with the finger, it can really get into those nooks and crannies of your finger. So it's really important that you take care of your body's health when you're using art supplies. Um, be responsible. Uh, so then um, once you watch this, you're going to draw your own value scales. Like I said, you'll need three. One has to be using uh and I didn't even put that in here, but I will add that after this presentation. One has to be using the blending, like I said. The other two are your choice. Um, and they can be as small or as big as you want, but you can fit this all on one page. Mine that you're about to see is all on one page. Um, because then after that, you still have to draw a little sphere and a little shaded form. And you'll see my um, mine on there too. Um, again, just a reminder, these don't have to be large. They can all fit on one page in your sketchbook very easily. Um, and then I want you to answer the reflection questions. How did you use shading to make your object look 3D? How did you think creatively uh, during this process journal? Oh, it says week. I'll, I'll, I'll change that too. Uh, which mark making technique did you prefer most and why did you like that? And what knowledge do you have about value after this one? Um, I copied this from some of my old assignments and I thought I deleted all the weeks on there, but I meant to change that. We used to do these by week. So this was like a, uh, an assignment that we did during the week. So you will have uh, time in class to work on this. And if you need help, um, you can make sure to put your photos in the presentation as quickly as possible. So um, I'm going to flip over now to the video where I show you a sped up version of mine because it actually took me a long time to do. And uh, you'll get to see uh, more there.